I have lost count of the number of times I have been approached by people and they've said to me, hey, guess what, Jim? I've had a Facebook ad account deleted or shut down for no apparent reason. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you what for no apparent reason might be. So let's dive in. Now, what will probably happen is that you'll get some people that will go, you know, I've got the options and I, I've got these um, shown in sort of proportion. So you can see here that Facebook itself as a sort of channel source within the Facebook ecosystem is bigger than Instagram. Uh, audience network is probably about the same size as uh, Instagram. And then you have Messenger. And that's typically where things get left. That's how people go, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm running ads and they'll they'll do automatic placements um, or they might run Instagram stories and that that'll be that. What we tend to do is we'll we'll look at we'll look at it in in slightly a different way. So one of the most important things that you you need to um, to have going for you as a Facebook advertiser is you need to have continuity. And we see a lot of people, we get approached by a lot of people who talk about the fact that their ad accounts have been shut down. And part of the reason that they've been shut down is that they haven't been listening to the signals that have been there all the time from Facebook. So Facebook has something called a business manager. Now, most people that I know that have have run any ads before, they might have set up a business manager. And usually it's, it's one of the telltale signals as to whether a business uh, that runs ads on Facebook has got any clue is the, the first thing is if you are asking for access to their business manager and they go, what's a business manager, then you know that they're not a sophisticated advertiser. So what we tend to do is we will we'll look for access to the business manager, then we'll look at the assets within the business manager. So let me just um, unfold this so you can see. So you can see here that there's a huge amount of uh, information that, that Facebook makes available via the business manager. And this is just the high level. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to work my way through them to uh, to kind of make it more complete. But just for the moment, um, let, let's focus on, on some of these. So we can see here we've got images and videos. So again, one of the most important things that you're going to have is the quality of the creative that you use. And one of the things that you can do is you can actually use the Facebook business manager to upload the creative. So you don't necessarily need to add creatives at the point in time that you are creating ads. So that's quite important. Um, so what you're able to do is you're able to upload assets. Uh, and again, I, I go into to so many accounts and I see the assets and all of the images are called Untitled 1, Untitled 2, Untitled 3. What you really need to do is you need to be descriptive about the information that is within that particular image. So be descriptive about what the image is or the video is, right? Because then that way, when you're actually setting up your campaigns, your ad sets and your ads, what we can do is we can actually pull out a dynamic parameter to actually explain what the image is. So when you're trying to look at your performance and you're saying, hey, how, how did that particular campaign go? You're able to actually see the performance of specific ads and you'll know without having to kind of dive in, you know, what, what untitled one is. You're like, well, I don't really know what that is, right? So you can actually see what it is. So so within the images of that, images and videos, they have uh, an ad account media section and that is where you can upload your images uh, independently of creating them within the, the campaign itself. So what else have we got? We've got billings. Again, one of the, the, the things I get really frustrated by is when we're working with an advertiser and we get notification that the ad has gone offline because the credit card payment couldn't be processed. So for me, one of the most important, there's a couple of things. I know that a lot of people like to buy ads using a credit card because they get miles and they can travel. Obviously at the moment, I don't think anyone's traveling anywhere on miles, but that's by the by. Um, but you know, again, I know that, that there's, there's been a benefit in having that done. But it's really important, if you are gonna use a credit card, you need to make sure you have more than one credit card. So if the first card gets declined, then you have a backup credit card in place. So it's, again, it's really important when you go into payment settings, you can you can add more than one credit card mechanism. And then that way you can say, this is my primary credit card. That's the one that will get charged most of the time. And if that one fails for any reason, and again, typically American Express tend to be more erroneous when it comes to, uh, credit card processing than uh, other other credit card processors so if you have an american express quite often they will get declined for no reason not that, not that um you know you haven't paid your bill it's just more american express are like i said quite quite um erroneous when it comes to um to actually not processing payments so make sure you have a backup credit card in place 
Uh, and then the other thing you can do is you can download invoices. So um, again, that's within the billing. And what you're able to do is you can actually add people to your business manager and you can set them up as a financial controller and give them access to only the billing and the ability to download invoices. That way, they won't need to come and bother you to actually say, hey, can you send me the invoices? Because they can go in and do that themselves without having you having to kind of give them access to everything else within the business manager. You can make it so that they are just a financial controller um, so they have the access to to the, the finance, and that's all. So attribution is a is a really big deal. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend a lot of time talking about that in in another video. But attribution for me is one of the most important things. If you're an omni-channel business, and you should be, again, I'm I'm stunned at how many agencies are Facebook only agencies when they leave they're leaving for the clients so much money on the table because the 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 conversion rate on Facebook is still it might be better than other channels, but it is still like in single single digits, like maybe you know one to five percent conversion, which means that ninety five to to ninety nine percent of the people don't convert, and quite often they will leave the Facebook ecosystem to go somewhere else. What attribution does is it gives you the ability to see all of the journeys that took place and all of the touch points, not just the on Facebook stuff. So Facebook Ads Manager only tracks and gives credit for Facebook conversions. Right. So again, what, what we what we look for is, you know, again, if, if somebody is working with a Facebook ad agency and they are paying them on a performance basis off the results from Facebook ads manager, they are paying way more money than they should be, because basically whatever touch points are kind of there in the in the journey. So if it was a organic search, Facebook will claim credit for that in ads manager. But in attribution, you'll be able to see that the organic search was the one that got it over the line. And really that, that channel should be the one that gets the credit or you have a, a different um, understanding as to what attribution is. So in simplistic terms, I always look at it and go, you've got the money that you spend and you've got the money that hits your bank. And those are the two numbers that, that are absolute givens and nothing can can make a difference. Um, everything else in between is just is just data and noise, right? And obviously with as a manager, they have a, a kind of, they have an attribution model of 28 days and one day view or 28 day click and one day view attribution as the standard window. You can change that if you want to. What you, you might also have is you'll have um, for when you're running ads, you'll have a, a particular number for, for the actual uh, machine learning mechanism. So like you can have one day click, seven day click, seven day click and one day view, seven and seven. Um, you can do all sorts of different things when it comes to that. But that's really for machine learning. With attribution, it's really more about, um, you know, you can try different models. So you can run sort of what, what Google call linear, but I, I'm trying to think what Facebook, I think Facebook called it even credit. Um, what what happens then if there are five touch points involved in a conversion taking place, then each one of them will get one fifth of the conversion value for that. The, the thing to kind of bear in mind is that even though you might be pushing through into um, Facebook the conversion value, right? And, and that's an important metric for you guys, right? Facebook in, in broad terms don't really care about the conversion value. All they care about is that a conversion took place. The conversion value is really more for your benefit. So you can say, I spent $100 and I made $200. So therefore, I've got a 2x um, ROAS. Um, whereas Facebook, like I said, all they care about is they made one sale and that's all that matters. Attribution, we can I could talk to it, talk about it for quite some time. Not going to on this video. Uh, pages, again, it's... it's um, something that we'll cover later. People, again, I'm, I'm stunned how many people have access to all of the assets within a Facebook uh, account. And really the, the people need to have the permissions that are relevant to the positions that they're holding down within your organization, right? And again, I'm stunned at how many people still have um, historical employees that worked for them that still have access to the page, to the ad account, to the catalogs and everything else. And again, if they wanted to, they could just kind of log into Facebook um, and and just see what's going on because quite often the accounts are tied to their personal Facebook profile. So in that case, you you have this situation where they can still kind of access it. So it's important that you kind of go through and periodically purge the uh, list of people that can have access to your account. Um, ad accounts, again, a lot of people will have more than one ad account. And sometimes the reason they have more than one ad account is they can only spend up to $5,000 a day on one ad account. So they end up with two. I know some people end up with multiple ad accounts because they're frightened they get ad accounts shut down. My personal view, and again, it's, it's probably different from a lot of other people, but my personal view is don't be setting up ad accounts 
just for the purposes of if you get an ad account shut down. If you have a Facebook ad rep like we do, um, then if you have a problem with, with an ad account getting shut down, right, then quite often it's because of compliance and policy restriction or policy issues, right? And that's more of an issue than, than the fact that the ad account has been shut down. If you just try and create another ad account and start up again, you're all you're doing is you're digging a deeper hole for your business. And you could end up in a situation where, you know, Facebook go, you know what, we've tried to sort of shut you down by shutting it down ad accounts. And then they'll take it up to a next level. And you could end up with your entire Facebook profile being shut down. And that clearly for you could be a, a really big issue. Um, so let's talk a little bit about brand safety. So again, I, th I think, um, you know, if, you, if you're if you a bigger brand, then brand safety is clearly going to be an important thing. If you are a direct -to consumer brand, brand safety may not be quite so much of an issue. You know, one of the things that, um, that, that I think would be, Sort of interesting to understand is just really how sort of brand safety sort of kicks in and again if you look here you can see there's a huge amount of um, of information within brand safety um there's a block list selection so you have the ability if there are particular pages that you don't want to to have your site shown on when it comes to advertising you can include a block list so that that will actually apply and what you're able to do is you can actually um you know you can download a list of all of the um a sites that have, have featured on the audience network and you can kind of go through and say, right, I don't want to appear on that one, that one, that one, that one. Um, and then you can kind of go from there really. Um, and then finally on that one, you've, you have what they call live stream. Um, and the, the problem with live stream is it's either an all or nothing. So either you include your, you, you have your, the ability for your um, ads to appear in live streams or you don't, right? And there, there isn't a say, well, I'll, I'll appear in a live stream for this, particular page but not this one so it's either you have them on or you have them off and that's really kind of a personal preference in terms of what you you want to have um so again when it comes to assets you'll have like your block list so the, these are the places where you don't want your ads to appear um uh, but you know so, so what you're able to do is you can create a block list if you want to um, what you can also do is you can so this is effectively a blacklist and what you can also do is you can have like a publisher allow list, which is effectively a whitelist, right? And again, it may well be that the um, the kind of the, the, the way you, you test particular campaign strategies, you might say, well, I'll create a blacklist and, and suppress that against the, uh, the campaigns that I'm running when it comes to the audience network and other placements. Um, and you can also then say, I'll, I'll also do a whitelist. So again, you'll be running on the audience network, but only to the sites or pages that you, um, you want your actual... Um, you know your your traffic to appear against uh, and then finally on the review side of things um you know you have uh, a list of obviously where your ads could appear and again if, if you've never done it before you can actually download an entire publisher list of all of the sites and it, again it's updated on a fairly frequent basis i think um you know it's usually maybe one or two days kind of um, outdated uh, and then what you'll also have is you'll have delivery reports so once you actually have run campaigns um, you'll say, okay, I, I appeared on the audience network, which is fine. What you're able to do is you can actually get a report to to kind of drill down and actually you'll be able to see specifically Facebook in-stream videos, which ones did you appear on, Facebook instant articles, where did you appear, audience network, and so on. Um, so again, there's, there's, there's a, a, a massive amount of information available in the, um, the business manager and definitely from from my perspective i think it's something that um you know more and more people should be doing things with kind of moving forward so let me just go back into to focus mode here uh, collapse this yeah so on the the other side of of the kind of the equation you have like your your events manager um and really i mean events manager because again a, a lot of people say oh you know the 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 pixel's not firing within the events manager you can do what they call debugging and what you're able to do is you're able to see in real time the data that is coming through so again if you're worried that your add to cart's not firing or your initiate checkout's not firing or your conversion pixel is firing but it's not giving you information that would be helpful for you to run dynamic um, remarketing ads uh, then this is obviously a, an area where you can kind of go and do some debugging um, so that's really important Account quality again, like every every um, account that that you have has got like an account quality score, right? And if you slip below two, 
then quite often what will happen is if you slip below two, you'll be put on probation. Um, and probation, basically, it, it's usually you're, you're providing a poor experience for the customers that are coming to your page and seeing your ads, right? And it's Facebook's way of, of kind of, I guess, penalizing you for the fact that you're not providing the level of service. And it quite, quite often, if you're an e-commerce business, uh, it might be that your products are not being shipped in a timely way. It might be that you're not handling returns in a timely way and people are complaining about it on um, like leaving comments or sending messages, right? So it, again, I can't stress enough. It's yeah, great, it's fine to sell product, but it's really, really important to provide great service, right? Not just from the point of view of getting reviews, but it's more, you know, if you have a poor quality, account quality score, you end up with a situation, like I said, you go into probation and then ultimately your account gets shut down, right? And if that happens, then, you know, there's, there's really no way back from that. That's something that, um, you know, is it's within your power to address. Facebook give you the signals and I think it's important that you kind of just take heed of the fact that account quality is there. You can see it. You can see how it's trending. If it's, you know, again, if you've invested time and effort in trying to improve your sort of deliverability, servicing and everything else, then, you know, you should in theory see your quality score improving, which then in theory should mean that your performance in the ad auctions will also improve as well because your quality is better. Um, so that that's obviously account quality. Um, when it comes to catalogs, again, the, the most important thing is that, you know, if you're an e-commerce business and you have a catalog set up, that, that there's accuracy within what you have available for sale versus what Facebook has available for them to be able to show. And again, catalogs really come into their own when it comes to things like running dynamic ads and, and um, you know, what you're going to do with those. So if you, you're going to you're going to run dynamic remarketing campaigns um, and show people specific products that they've actually had a look at before, then having a, a kind of well structured catalog is really important. So again, it's important that they've got good titles, good descriptions, good imagery, that the tracking URLs are kind of set up correctly um, to be able to kind of pass the information through into either analytics or, or you know, uh, Facebook analytics as well. Um, pixels, again, the, the most important thing, you know, we always see one of the biggest challenges and issues is that the pixel is is incorrectly configured, right? And again, it's it's usually, you know, if somebody is a Shopify ver uh, merchant, quite, quite often what they'll do is they'll just grab their pixel ID, put it into Shopify and think, right, that's it, we're done, right? And the reality of it is, is that, you know, at, at a base level, that is fine, that's great. Right. But what again, what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to use things like customer match, which the Shopify integration of the base pixel just doesn't take care of. Right. So what we tend to do is we will kind of like use Google Tag Manager to implement the Facebook pixel. So then that way we can implement things like scroll tracking. Uh, we can implement a uh, number of times that people have, have kind of come to your site, so returning visitors and frequency. We can capture the device that they're on. Again, one of the things we do is we create remarketing campaigns or remarketing audiences where people have started their journey on a mobile. And then what we can do is we remarket to those people when they are next on a desktop, right? When, when obviously everyone was not working um, from home, then that was really powerful because effectively what would happen is people would, maybe if they were commuting to work on the train, they would look at something on their phone on Facebook. When they got to the office, they would pick up their computer and then sort of, you know, once they've checked their work emails for five minutes, they would then log on to Facebook to see what's going on. Um, and what we would be able to do is we'd be able to pick up the conversation with that person who started it on a mobile and pick it up on a desktop because ultimately the reason we can do that is because people are logged in on their devices, all of them, right? So it's their desktop, their tablet, their their computer at work, their computer at home. If the Facebook account is logged into all of them, then ultimately Facebook are able to kind of join the dots between all of those different devices. So that's one of the reasons why having a pixel is great. And again, when it comes to things like uh, list, list creation, so if you're gonna create a lookalike audience, um, the, the more information you can provide Facebook with, because again, most people don't use their normal email address to sign up for Facebook. So if you're only going to match up on email, then you're going to end up with a fairly low match rate. Um, and, and again, if your name is John or Fred or Charlie or whatever, then there's a lot of those. So, you, you know, I think with uh, Facebook, you can sort of uh, upload first name, last name, email address, phone, zip, state, city, um, you know, and, and 
the more of that you can kind of upload at the point of um, sales taking place, then the more Facebook will actually be able to match when you're trying to create a lookalike audience. So again, for, from our perspective, we've, we've been doing it for years. You know, we've been doing that primarily through Google Tag Manager and capturing information, pushing it into a data layer, and then sending it to Facebook at the point in time that the information becomes available. Um, and that for us has really helped us when it comes to creating lookalike audiences that are have a much, much higher match rate than people who just rely on grabbing the pixel ID and putting it into Shopify. Um, so the next two things, so you have like a line of business and, um, and this, this is something that, um, again, like we, we, we talked about attribution, we talked about analytics. So in order to kind of like, um, join the dots between all of the components that make up your Facebook ecosystem, you need to have what they call a line of business. So the idea behind it is you put, put your line of business in place. So that could be your brand name or trading name, right? And then you add your assets to that. And it could be your messenger account, your uh, ad account, your page, uh, your catalog, um, any sort of custom events that you've got set up and that sort of thing. Um, you know, you're then in a position where what you can actually do is you can can actually see the impact of all of those kind of components taking place. So again, if you use Messenger a lot, let's say somebody hits you up on Messenger and says, hey, I'm looking for this product and I don't know if you have it in my size or in, my, in this color. And you, one of your customer service reps deals with that on Facebook Messenger, right? Then they go back to, to their computer and they look and they do something else. What you're able to do if you have a line of business set up, you're able to actually track that full journey under the line of business. So what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to see the impact of your service on sales. And again, it's really quite impactful to actually see that in the wild. Um, and then finally, when it comes to business settings, so this is where you can kind of set up things like your um, doing business as name, um, any kind of tax information that you have, uh, again, it's just really important that, that from a compliance perspective, you set up everything that you need to, to, to kind of make sure that Facebook understand that, that you're a legitimate business and you care about, you know, compliance, regulation, policy kind of in, enforcement, um, you know, and then that way, you know, you'll have a really, really good relationship with Facebook ads moving forward. So I hope you found this video to be of use. If you did, then make sure that you subscribe to my channel and um, look out for more Facebook ads videos in the future. I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye for now.